Hi everyone, so let's have a look at uh, the supply curve of labour for a firm in a perfectly, perfectly competitive labour market. Now you may remember that when it came to perfect competition in the theory of the firm or business economics unit, that we saw a market there with many buyers and many sellers. We see those same characteristics in a perfectly competitive labour market. That is that we have many buyers of labour, i.e. the firms, and many sellers of labour, i.e. the employees. The employees are doing the selling. They're, they're selling their labour and their time to actually go and work for a firm. So I've just characterised this here under this bullet point. So we've got many firms hiring many individual workers. Okay, a firm can hire an extra worker at an existing wage. Now, if you just think about this for a moment, uh, perhaps you work at somewhere where one of your friends works. What's the differential in terms of your earnings? Are you both being paid exactly the same amount? Well, it's more than likely you were. Did you both start at the same time? It's quite likely you probably didn't. You may have started at uh, slightly different points in time but you are likely to be paid exactly the same wage rate. Uh, and we can see this here for the firm where we've got on the y-axis the wage and uh, on the x-axis the level of employment in this market. Uh, we can see W1 representing our wage uh, and uh, this is the industry supply, uh, sorry, the firm supply curve here. Okay, so as they actually increase their labor force from 10 to 11, they pay the same wage. Okay, so they pay exactly the same wage to the 10th and the 11th worker. There's no additional cost in hiring, and this is very, very different from what we will see in the next lesson in imperfectly competitive labor markets. Okay, uh, and what this also means, say the, uh, the wage that's being paid in this industry might be perhaps eight pounds per hour, um, and so this firm will pay eight pounds per hour as well. Uh, because that's what's happening in the industry and that's what is uh, being undertaken by themselves. So we see this taking place here. The 10th worker would earn £8, the 11th worker would earn £8. Okay, and that would mean that the marginal cost of employing that 11th worker would be the same as employing that 10th worker. So therefore the supply equals the marginal cost in this uh, perfectly elastic supply curve here. Okay, now this then translates to the industry supply curve uh, where you would be able to compare wages across different uh, pubs, different restaurants and then see what sort of differentials you might get. You'll find that they're often clustered around a, uh, a particular uh, area and so therefore you are likely to see the same sort of wage for the industry as a whole. Okay, so there is an important difference here though, that for the firm they've almost got an infinite, as this suggests, an infinite number of uh, individual workers they can employ. Of course those resources aren't really infinite, but this is what seems to be implied by this uh, supply curve here. But for this curve we can see that it becomes upward sloping, and what does that mean? Really it means that actually to attract more and more workers to the marketplace or to that particular industry and that line of work you would need to offer higher wages okay that's what it really illustrates there but what's also interesting is that this extra person has been employed but that would be a barely imperceptible uh, change into the actual industry supply curve there. So therefore, we do not denote any sort of shift taking place when there is a change in the firm's level of uh, employment. Okay, and that is because we've got so many firms hiring so many individual workers. Okay, thanks guys.